Hello men, welcome back to another peptide walkthrough. I'm pumped for this video. And one quick note, you notice the background has changed. As I moved, I'll be turning one room into a full studio. So hopefully in the coming weeks and months, this will be looking a lot more professional and nicer. Before I continue with this video, I must have a disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. Any information in this video is purely for educational reasons. I talk about research peptides because myself am a researcher. In no way do I promote the use of research peptides for human or animal use. All my experiments are designed for myself and only me. And they're conducted for pure research and does not have correlation to animal or human use. If you do want to use therapeutic peptides, I strongly recommend to work with a licensed physician so that you can have the best experience. By agreeing to watch this video, you understand this disclaimer. Thank you, and let's get straight into this video. So what is this peptide combo? Well, this peptide combo is tesmorelin with ipinurelin. It's six milligrams of tesmorelin to two milligrams of ipinurelin. Tesmorelin is a GHRH growth hormone releasing hormone and ipinurelin is a GHRP growth hormone releasing peptide. And these two peptides together are by far my favorite peptide combo for increasing endogenous growth hormone in the body. And many health enthusiasts and peptide experts consider this combo the gold standard for increasing growth hormone naturally in the body. So let's go over how do these two peptides work together. Well, we have tesmorelin and ipinurelin. Tesmorelin is a GHRH, growth hormone releasing hormone. And what this does, it goes up to pituitary gland and it signals the body to create more growth hormone. It's important to know that just because it creates more growth hormone does not mean it'll be released at the same time. And this is where ipinurelin comes in because ipinurelin goes up to the pituitary gland and inhibits somostatin, which allows the body to release growth hormone. So tesmorelin will create more growth hormone and ipinurelin will release growth hormone. So combining these two peptides together ensures the creation and release of growth hormone happens at the same time. And this is why these two peptides have such a strong synergistic effect. So what are the research benefits of these two peptides? Well, the main benefit you're getting from these two peptides is an increase in endogenous growth hormone, which means the body is making the hormone. And since growth hormone is the hormone of vitality, this can help support building muscle, burning fat, sleeping better, better brain health, better skin health. Pretty much it just helps prevent the body from aging. That's why it's called the hormone of vitality. And what's so cool about this peptide combo, which you'll learn later in the video, depending on when this peptide is taken and how it's used, it can really affect the research benefits. So what are the most commonly reported research side effects? And this is one reason why I love this combo so much, because especially comparing to other growth hormone peptides, I believe this combo offers the highest reward of increasing growth hormone with the lowest amount of side effects. But there are still some research side effects and that include facial flushing, water retention, joint pain, and a sharp increase in IGF-1 levels. And the water retention, joint pain, and IGF-1 levels, in my experience and my research, mostly comes when the researcher is using a very high dose of the growth hormone or if the research subject is very sensitive to growth hormone. Personally, from my own research and use of these compounds, I have not experienced the joint pain or the sharp increase in IGF-1 levels. The only thing I have experienced is water retention, but that was quickly diminished once I actually reduced the dose or stopped taking the peptide and or was taking a natural diuretic, which helped reduce the water retention. So digging deeper into how actually timing affects the research benefits of this peptide combo. And there is no hard science or evidence on this. This is more coming from just the peptide community, peptide experts, and my own personal experience. And I've actually noticed in my own experience and research that this actually happens. But pretty much how I like to think about it is that the peptide ejection loads the gun, and then what activity you use shoots the trigger. So for example, if your main research benefit was trying to improve sleep, taking this peptide before sleep would have the highest chance of hitting that research benefit. But these are just some general protocols I do myself and I keep it pretty simple. So if my main research goal was burning fat, I would do before a workout in a fasted state or just in a fasted state in the morning. If my main research goal was building muscle, I would do this peptide combo after a workout in a fasted state. If my main research goal was improving sleep, I would do this before bed in a fasted state. And if my main research goal was general anti-aging, I would do this peptide in a fasted state in the morning. But pretty much when I'm experimenting and researching with this peptide combo, I found the most use in my research of using this peptide before I work out in a fasted state. So now I wanna go a little bit deeper into why this is one of my favorite peptide combos. 
Well, as I mentioned already earlier in the video, is that these two peptides, in my opinion, offer some of the greatest research benefits with the lowest side effect profile, especially in the peptide context. Because in general, I believe peptides are very safe and well used, but inside the peptide context, these are some of the safest and most effective research peptides. Another reason why I love this research combo is that it does not desensitize the receptors where other growth hormone peptides can cause that, such as GHRP2 and hexmorelin. They may have a sharp increase in growth hormone, but it does come with other side effects. And another reason why I love this blend, going a little bit more into the safety profile, is that this blend does not nearly increase cortisol, prolactin, or other side effects compared to other growth hormone peptides. For example, GHRP2, hexmorelin, and GHRP6 can increase hunger, prolactin, sensation of anxiety, and depression, where these two peptides are very minor if have none of those unwanted side effects. So when I'm using this peptide in my research, here are some supplements that I like to use to really get the most out of it. The first is actually gonna be the masculine medicine, which in my opinion is the strongest natural test booster on the market. It has herbs, animal parts, vitamins and minerals, pretty much everything someone needs to naturally increase their testosterone. And one way I have to think about it is that growth hormone will create new cells and testosterone will blow them up. This is why I believe taking a natural test booster with some growth hormone peptide is such a powerful combo. The next thing is a natural diuretic. And what I do is I go on Amazon, I type in natural diuretic, anything that comes up is perfect with good ratings. And what that does is that the natural diuretic will prevent water retention some research may experience when using this peptide combo because one of the side effects is actually water retention, which is very common along most growth hormone peptides. Peptides. So here are some other peptides I like to stack this combo with because one thing I love about peptides is that they have a synergistic effect, especially the right peptides. And these are some peptides I've benefited personally when using Tesserol and Iperilin together. The first is called PEGMGF, and this peptide helps a lot with actually muscle recovery. It actually helps stimulate satellite cells in your muscle cells to actually recover faster. Next note where the peptide I enjoy stacking this with is TB500, which is great when it comes to muscle recovery and overall recovery of the body. Next is BPC-157, and BPC-157 is one of my favorite peptides, and this really helps with adding recovery aspects to the research protocol and as well BPC-157 actually enhances the growth hormone receptors in the body so it really gets the most out of the growth hormone peptides. AOD-9604 is another noteworthy peptide because it actually enhances the fat protein effects more potent than the growth hormone peptides and as well it does not compete with the growth hormone receptors so in my opinion it pairs very well with growth hormone peptides. Next noteworthy peptide I enjoy stacking this with is Kiss Peptin 10 which starts the entire testosterone casket. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, is that growth hormone will create new cells and testosterone will blow them up. So any way to enhance growth hormone and testosterone together I believe is a very powerful combination. And the last noteworthy peptide I enjoy stacking this with is 5-amino-1-MQ, which this peptide has multiple benefits but like especially very powerful when it comes to helping the body increase its NAD levels, burn more fat, and preserve muscle. So for my research, here are some pros and cons that I noted from this peptide blend. The first pro is that this seems to be the gold standard for increasing in endogenous growth hormone because in my opinion, from my research and other experts, it seems to offer the highest amount of growth hormone with the highest safety profile. And that's pretty much the major pro of this peptide is that it just gets a lot of benefits with low safety profile. So now what are the major cons I noted from researching this peptide blend? Pretty much the only con I noted from my research is that it can be very expensive just because the dosing range for testosterone is pretty large, anywhere from 500 to 2,000 micrograms. So if someone's conducting research and using a large dosing range like 1.5 or 2,000 micrograms, then that research experiment can be very expensive, especially if their research protocol is anywhere from eight to 12 weeks long. So I've used this peptide quite extensively and I really enjoy it. So what's my overall opinion on this? I love this peptide combo. I actually prefer it way more over the ModGRF Ipinorelin combo, which is still a great combo. But this one is just a little bit more advanced, a little bit better, and overall suits my goals. And I really love how there is a large research dosing scheme with this peptide combo. For example, you know, Ipinorelin, I've seen anywhere from 100 to 300 micrograms. Tessarelin, I've seen anywhere from 500 to 2,000 micrograms. Meaning that in the research, there's a lot of flexibility to play around with your research benefits, research goals, and research budget. And last two things I'll say about this peptide is I really enjoy adding in BPC-157 to this mix just because 
BPC-157 not only helps with the recovery, but greatly enhances the growth hormone receptors. So making sure I'll get the most out of these peptides in my research. And lastly, in my research, if I did not want to spend the money on tesmorelin, I would solely use ipinorelin in my research because in my opinion, I believe that ipinorelin is by far the best GHRP or growth hormone peptide for what it offers in its price range. All right, so I did my best to go in depth over this peptide blend. So now I'll be switching over my camera and I'll be walking through how I actually use this peptide in my research, how I reconstituted, just everything I did in my own research. And I recommend hopping over to Rumble to watch that because this is where the video ends for YouTube. And as well, I recommend checking out my peptide video course where I go in depth over peptides. So if you really wanna master research peptides, check that out, it's the link in the description. But now I'm gonna switch my camera and get straight into my lab techniques.